From half an inch all the way up to three inches, how much steel does it take to stop a 338 Lapua? More specifically, how much steel does it take to stop an armor-piercing 338 Lapua? Which we'll be answering after we figure out how much it takes to stop a standard precision round. See, even though armor-piercing rounds exist, they're pretty rare and quite costly compared to the typical 338 Lapua that you can find on the shelves, which is crazy to say because even regular 338 Lapua is like shooting a Gucci cup of coffee downrange with each trigger pull. So how about we start by seeing if Desert Tech's 300 grain CNR precision load can make it through a half inch. And precision ammo calls for a precision rifle, which is why I brought out the SRSM-2, the rifle that is currently seeing combat as it's being used by Ukrainian snipers. Well, I guess the rifle in front of me hasn't seen combat, at least that I know of. Damn right, and why are you wasting my time with a short barrel? Wasting your time? Damn, this has a 26 inch barrel just like the Savage you used to seeing me shoot, and even with this Def Can 8.6, it is still shorter and over six and a half pounds lighter. Six and a half pounds? You just need to work out more. You know what, why don't we just shoot the steel? What a good starting point indeed, huh Terry? And uh, by the way, I purposely aimed there so that I could hopefully reuse this piece of steel at some point. But as you can see, no issue for the Lapua, or the Precision Lapua. Let me get my pinky and oh, oh, it just slides in that massive hole. Guess that means we need to step it up an eighth inch to a five eighth inch piece of mild steel. Typically an extra eighth inch really doesn't mean that much to most people. Wait, okay, maybe it will mean a lot to you, Terry. But uh, anyway, typically not to most people, but whenever it comes to steel, an eighth inch is a freaking huge difference. So let us see if the 338 Lapua can make it through this, the uh, precision load. Well, that didn't take long. Obviously a uh, massive crater, but uh, definitely did not go through. Feels pretty good on the pinky there. I just can't believe that the 338 Lapua can't make it through 5 8 7 inch of mild steel, even with a precision load. You know what, let me try that one one more time. And just as I feared, yep, just about an instant replay. Oh my gosh. Basically an instant replay, although that one seems to be a little bit deeper, you know, according to the pinky, however accurate that is. So uh, definitely not getting through five eighths of an inch, at least not without an armor piercing round, that is. This is the Raug Swiss P 260 grain armor piercing bullet sent over by Emacs Tactical. And I can't thank him enough because forget your Gucci cup of coffee. This is basically like hurling a sit down meal downrange every time you pull the trigger. And unlike your typical armor piercing, it's at least the most common ones. This one features a tungsten carbide core. So? So that means it's extremely hard and ready for penetration. Oh, me too. No, no, we're not going there today. But we are going to 5 eighths of an inch. Well, that was eventful. I heard something come back and hit the tree above me, so uh, don't try this at home. <laughs> basically right on the money. I honestly wasn't sure where it was going to hit because, you know, they're a little too expensive to sight in with. But it hit basically right on the money and that is a much smaller hole than the other two. Let me try and get my pinky in that. Oh, oh, that is definitely not even close to the other two. But let's check out the back. I'm just hoping it didn't damage steel sled 4.2, but we will see later. Straight freaking through 5 eighths of an inch. Let's check out steel sled 4.2. Oh, oh, that is a massive gouge. Oh, that is not good at all. But that sounds like a problem for another day because we are stepping it up another eighth inch to a three quarter inch piece of mild steel. I used three quarter inch piece of mild steel, but keep in mind, this was enough to stop a 50 BMG ball round. Fired out of a mini 50 BMG, but we're still getting into some serious territory. Well, that didn't look good, and uh, one thing I forgot to mention, I think I forgot to mention about the SRSM-2 is how easy it is to swap barrels. I mean, I love shooting 338 Lapua, and with this setup, it's basically non-existent recoil, but it's not exactly known for being an economical plinker, so being able to swap to something like 308 in about a minute is a freaking game changer. Still not the most economical cartridge in the world, but it is a whole lot easier to stomach, especially when I'm using ammo squared. In case you don't know, ammo squared is a service that allows me to set aside a certain amount each week or month, whatever designation I want for cartridges like the 308 which builds my stockpile pretty quickly, at which point I can either tell them to ship however much of it I want to, or most likely what will happen is they'll keep it in their climate controlled facility for me for another date because I hate explaining myself to the missus about all the boxes coming to the house, so it's just easier that way sometimes. Nicely done, nicely done. That rifle is so damn accurate, and uh, just for context, this is an M80A1. And as you could see, the 338 Lapua left a much larger hole. <laughs> Look at that gigantic hole right there. Let me see if it's any better than the 5 8 inch 
change with the pinky test. The, ooh, yeah, really not a whole lot much better, but uh, I mean, that's probably a good thing. Check out the back, mainly for Steel Sled 4.2, and see what we... Yep, definitely a uh, much larger hole than the MADA one. <laughs> and way cleaner too. My gosh, it looks like somebody drilled that hole. Okay, I'm stalling. Let me see what happened to Steel Sled 4.2. Oh, 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 another gouge. <sighs> well, as long as it's not going through Steel Sled 4.2, I guess I can't be too mad. But let's step it up another quarter inch to a one inch thick piece of mild steel. We used one again, and as you could see, this absolute beast is where most 30 caliber armor piercing bullets tend to fail. But 338 armor piercing bullets, on the other hand, I'm honestly not sure what to expect on that one, but we shall see. And one thing I was definitely not expecting was the recoil to be so, I don't want to say pleasant, but mild on a 10 pound 338 Lapua rifle. I mean, probably more like 14 to 15 with all the stuff on it. And I knew it was pretty pleasant with the factory muzzle brake, but jumping to a direct threat suppressor, I just did not expect the recoil to be that pleasant at all. And I'm sorry to bring it up again, but have I told you that this rifle is accurate? I mean, holy shite balls right in line with the other two shots. I wanted to do that to give a uh, demonstration of the 338 power you know as long as it went through let me try and get my pinky in that hole oh still pretty tiny although uh, slightly bigger than the three-quarter inch moment of truth let's take this out of here and check out the back here oh my gosh straight through an inch of mild steel an inch of mild steel i guess that leaves uh, steel slit 4.2 and oh <laughs> Oh, another gouge. Well, I guess I can't be too upset because at least the gouges are getting smaller, but how about before we jump it up another quarter inch in thickness of mild steel, we dial down the thickness and bump up the hardness. Wait, it can't be thick and hard? What? No, bam, get your mind out of the gutter. When you think of armored steel, you definitely don't think of mild steel because obviously it's not armor. You probably think of something like AR-500, which is actually what Steel Sled 4.2 is made out of, just at a 45 degree angle. It is a very hard grade of steel that is perfect at stopping bullets. Well, I guess I shouldn't say perfect, but I shot this same exact bullet directly at three quarters of an inch of AR-500 without success. So how about we start things off with a half inch piece? And just to prove that it's actually AR-500, let me shoot one of those Desert Tech loads real quick. Okay, so this is an M2 AP fired out of the 30-06. This is an M80A1, and this is a Russian Steel Course M.62 by 54R. Here is our 338 Lapua, and it didn't even dent this freaking AR-500. Or it didn't even gouge the AR-500 directly on. Let's see what that Swiss P can do. Holy, no, actually I can see that from back there. I believe it went straight through. Let me get my uh, pinky, oh man, that feels like a terrible pinky hole. But I mean, obviously it's just a small penetrator going through, just like me. Let us check out the back though and make sure that it went, oh my gosh, straight through a freaking half inch piece of AR-500. Let's see what Steel Sled 4.2, oh. Oh shit, that is probably the worst one of the day. <sighs> well, I guess I can't complain with results like that. I mean, a half inch of AR-500 is super freaking impressive still i mean i was hoping that it was going to blow right through that but one material that i'm not entirely sure what's going to happen is ar-550 so even though this ar-550 gong sent over by ta targets is the exact same thickness of a half inch as the uh, last ar-500 plate it is substantially harder than ar-500 and ta targets also uses some of the highest quality uh, ar plate that i've found so it might be even harder than i'm thinking still not even close to tungsten carbide or me but uh, i'm gonna try and aim in somewhat of a nonchalant area so i could still use it as a target afterwards. Keep in mind, obviously, this plate is not rated for armor-piercing bullets. But holy shite balls! I think it made it straight through again, and I tried to aim, you know, I don't think anybody's going to aim for this section of the plate, but uh, anyway, let's check out the back and see what exactly... Oh my gosh, that is a freaking clean oh my gosh let's check out steel sled 4.2 and see oh that's actually not as bad as the last one that begs the question can it make it through five eighths of an inch of ar500 this is an absolute beast piece of steel let us see if uh, we have any chance guess i should tighten it huh oh 
Oh my gosh, I think it done it. Oh my gosh. Oh, wait, that doesn't look like AR500. I mean, I guess I could be wrong. Let me check out the pinky. Oh, that feels like the mild steel. Let me uh, check out the back, though, and see what our hole looks like on the uh, exit. Oh, that is definitely not AR500. Somebody swapped this out on me, and I don't even want to look at what happened to steel slip. Oh. <laughs> Oh! Okay, so maybe we won't be figuring out if it can make it through a 5 8 inch piece of AR-500. I mean, uh, from what I recall though, it was poking out the back of 3 quarters of an inch of AR-500, so I'm pretty sure it would go through 5 eighths. But let's jump things back to mild steel. And this time we're jumping it up another quarter inch from where we left off to a piece of steel that has never been featured, or a thickness of steel that has never been featured on this channel before. One and a quarter inches of mild steel. This is an absolute beast piece of steel, and I'm uh, gonna have to open that up a little bit more. <laughs> this is getting to that territory where if an evil robot or something was made of this you're probably screwed either way probably but we'll see And guys, I'm sure you've already heard of the absolutely horrific flood that happened in Texas over the past week. I don't think I need to go into the details about how devastating it was for the community, but I thought it would be great if we as a gun community could step up and donate directly to the cause. So I put a link in the description down below where I'll be donating to, but if you have another link that you think would be even more impactful, please feel free to post it in the comments section down below. Take that evil robot, and yes, I know it's not centered. I'm trying to save some real estate for uh, other future tests, but let's check out that... Oh, oh it might have done it. Let me check out the... Uh, pinky oh my gosh ever so slightly bigger than the one inch piece of mild steel it goes way deeper in there though let's check out the back and see what happened moment of truth for our lives depend on it with this robot oh my gosh straight through an inch and a quarter of mild steel i mean this weighs something you know like 12 or 15 pounds i'm not sure what this weighs but it went straight freaking through and i'm just pausing the inevitable let's check out steel sled 4.2 and s <coughs> Oh, that's another bad one. I mean, uh, definitely not as bad as the other ones, though. Guys, can your 300 mag do that? Probably not. Can your 7 millimeter mag of sorts do that? Definitely not. I mean, I'm not even sure that they make an armor piercing round in the 7 millimeter bore size, but this time around, let's jump it up another quarter inch in thickness to a one and a half inch thick piece of mild steel. I will be thoroughly, thoroughly impressed if it can make it through this absolute unit. <coughs> I don't know, I seem to hear a lot of stuff come back on that one, so I'm really not sure. Only one way to find out in a very nice looking hole. Let's check it out. I cannot see the bottom of that for sure. Just looks like an empty black hole. Let's check out the pinky test though. Ooh, feels pretty similar to an inch and a quarter, maybe slightly bigger. And what happened on the back of this piece of steel? We will certainly find, oh my gosh. Stopped, somewhat cold. I mean, there's a little bit of a bulge on the back, but uh, definitely got stuck. Stopped. Well, there's our answer. Super freaking impressive regardless, but if you want to see an even more impressive round, or I mean, I'm hoping that it's more impressive, the 338 LaPoo round so insane that I can't even show you on YouTube because it's an API, make sure to check out my Patreon, which will also help me make more videos like these in the future. Here's some more of those testing videos, and remember, don't let ballistics drive you bananas.